Hello, and welcome to another slow unpacking of Galdheim, where we savor every taste of flavor in our pack. Today, we learn more about the lore of shapeshifters, dwarfs, and demons of the plane of heavy metal. Enjoy! Village Rides by Igor Kierflug. Flavor The Skeller race scorn claws in conquered villages. Cursed totems of wood and bone that sap survivors of physical strength and the will to fight back. The Village Rides serves as a palate cleanser from the previous soft Strixhaven cars to the metal plane of Kaldheim. Someone is being offered to the demons that the Skeller hope to free. This is a grueling sight for the people of this village. Though the card gives us card advantage, this is because of the magic the Skelly use. It enables them to sap the mana from the sorrow and fear from the villages they conquer. But on only by raising these scorn poles. They also use the death marks which you can see on this unfortunate man. These give power to the raider that made that mark. Now the Skelly raiders cannot use all of this sorrow and hate. So the pieces that overflow, flow directly to the underground to the demons of Immerstorm, who bring the promise of more destruction and chaos to come. Stalwart Valkyrie by Jason Rainville. Flavor, only the worthy may pass. Here we see some foreshadowing of one of the angels of Kaldheim. We see a shepherd, who is meant to find the worthy warriors of Kaldheim. This angel is rather strong. By exiling a creature, probably a reaper did that when someone was a coward in battle. You can summon this 3-2 flying warrior out of thin air. I like to note that this angel's wings are not the usual white, but they are the blue of the night sky of Isfah, keeping us in the freezing colors of Kaldheim and showing us that this card was made for a blue-white flyer stack. Disdainful Stroke by Campbell White. Flavor. The skald boasted that he could outsing the sea. Cosima heard him and drowned his village with a single wave in Longbeard Saga. Now this is taken literally and figuratively. A skald warrior challenged the literal sea to a karaoke battle. Cosima did not like this too much, but didn't mind the either. We have talked about the war between blue, which is actually green, and red before. Red is boasting and blue is not minding too much as they foil all reds, quote, plants, unquote. With disdain, she waved one hand and the whole sea sang Dancing Queen in a massive tidal wave. This changed the sweet summer night to a wonder wall of water and then 500 miles of destruction followed. Beautiful. Dwarven Reinforcements by Andrei Kuzinski. Flavor? Orders? We don't wait for orders. This card is funny, because someone foretold that at the most important point in battle, these dwarves would charge in and change the course of the brawl. You might think that it is insignificant to foresee a few dwarves helping out in battle, but these small people do not take orders. You are lucky to have them fighting on your side. In Viking fashion, these dwarves might take the side that would give them the most opportunity for the most epic battle as you can see from the composition of the R2. They don't fight in coordination, but charge towards the action headlong. King Harold's Revenge by Lorenzo Mastroianni Flavor We will destroy the pretenders and reclaim the divinity of the Aenir. We have seen the elves of Kaldheim before. They are a group of people that respect the old ways and wish to restore them. Most elves believe that in order for this to happen, Goma has to return. Goma has believed to have the power to free the Aenir, who are the gods that came before the gods we know now from Kaldheim. They are said to be contained in the trees of Jaspara, which we have seen in the previous Kaldheim pack. The elves of Kaldheim have had their divinity stolen away from them, forever bringing black mana to their usual green alignment. This hatred and contempt made the elves split off into two groups. Those that wanted to take their power back and those that had faith that the old ways would return if they just kept following the old ways. Now these two elven groups got into a war and Harold was the one to reunite them. Showing with the power from the trees the old gods are trapped in that together 
the elves could have the power to overthrow the new gods. Garfell Candlemaster by Izzy. Flavor, trapped in the realm of dead flesh and scars hunting, the ravenous wolves of Garfell follow the Dreadmorn to warn Gale. This is a short story about how humans got to have doggo friends. We hunted a lot and wolves liked being around us. Later, we tamed them, just like this zombie berserker does. A zombie who tames wolves makes for a rather whimsical story. I believe these wolves are just following their zombie because it protects them by being such an aggressive leader. The zombies of the Dreadmorn only fight for gold and power, so they have no need to attack these wolves. They do, however, look to fight humans with money. The wolves can then take most of the flesh. False Peak Yeti by Chris Ran. Flavor? Some heroes line their coats with yeti fur. More yetis line their bellies with heroes. It is not advised to be a hero and try to fight one of these yetis. If you look at the art, you can also see why you do not have to. These yetis live in solitary places, in long mountain ranges, and they probably just want to be alone. But the vikings of Galvine think differently. They see an opportunity for glory, because if they could win against such a beast, they will have eternal glory, judging from the fact that this thing is about the size of 3 to 4 humans, I would deem their chances slim. Open the Omen Paths by Eric the Shams, another story spotlight card, where we see Tibble open one of the portals that would spell the destruction of Kaldheim. He does this because he has been promised chaos and destruction, which is something devils live for. Opening an omen path gives you the chance to bring in large creatures or to give your creatures the element of surprise. Tybalt is more interesting than you think. He is actually a devil with magic to give others pain. He has been busy with pushing Chandra's pain from the loss of her friend before. Now here, it is unclear what pain lured him to call him, as the Vikings delight in their battles and therefore their pain. So maybe the Phyrexians have the power to locate the plane for. God's Hall Guardian by Siddharth Chattafavi. Flavor? Not a single rat has been seen in Isfel since the gods moved in. Now, we have seen Siddharth and his compositions before, so we know what to look for. In this case, we see a huge cat as the main focal point. A cat so intelligent that it was unimpressed with Nico's glass toys. We can almost see the intelligence from his eyes. I think this intelligence is necessary for this cat in order to spot the humans that were not heroes in the Hall of Gods. Now to return to the composition, we see the huge lights behind the cat and we see the chandelier in front of it. The chandelier signaling the warmth inside of the God's Hall. The light shows us that if you do not get eternal glory, then the space outside of this hall is rather cold. Our cat guardian hangs between these two worlds. Rootless You by Nicholas Gregory. Flavor, we are bound to wander this forest forever. Sometimes I think it wanders with us. Ogni Kana Scout. This is a particular type of tree. So after googling it, I saw that this tree is called Hurtful Venomous Tree in my language. Actually, a few of these leaves could kill a horse. When you chop this tree, it lets out more venomous dust, showing us why this tree can only search for creatures with power 6 or greater. Only a giant could outlive this tree. Kana are another people that hate the current gods, next to the Skelle and the Elves. This is because the new gods could have freed them from their curse that forces them to roam their lands forever. The gods just were too busy and never got to it. This curse forces the Kana to wander the Elder Guard, with trees like this waiting to die and kill some of the Kana with it. Again, this plane is more metal when you look at it a little longer. Divine Gambit by Joe Slucher. Flavor, there are rules and then there are gods. The people of Kaldheim are bound by rules. The code of clans and being stuck on their worlds. The gods ignore all of these rules. This card is rather hurtful in many ways, 
as it tells us that the players of the game could sometimes change the rules, it is just not as fun. Now as these pieces are to the player, so are we to the gods. The divine could change our lives, it would just not be fun to them. I can sympathize with the Kana a lot better now. Feria, Judge of Valor by Livia Prima. Flavor, she is both shepherd and reaper, and her judgment is final. On Kalfheim there are two kinds of angels. There are the shepherds, who are supposed to protect and guide the worthy towards Starnheim, and then there are the reapers, who are meant to kill cowards. Now Feria is both of those kinds in one angel, showing us an extra pair of wings as well. This duality came to grow onto her as she had killed her reaper, when he wanted to kill a human that she deemed worthy. Reapers and shepherds are not supposed to choose before their judgment was unanimous. Now Feria is more black aligned than white because she has killed her partner, losing her purity and choosing for her own side. Now she has to choose on her own. We can also see why Livia Prima was chosen to make Feria's art. She makes art that draws you in. Her characters all have a powerful aura that makes you want to look twice. Her characters also have gotten their powers at a great cost, losing their purity or even their lives in order to fulfill their human desires. Feria might not be a human, but she does have desires and protecting hers definitely came at a great cost. Reflections of Lejara by Aaron Miller. Flavor, the masks float downstream toward the mirror lake where faces arise to wear them. I have heard the complaints, where the shapeshifters are so mysterious and we do not know enough. Well, we have explored their stories a little before. Here we see their origins. These masks just float down a long river where they eventually find a body to spend a lifetime of learning and curiosity with. When the shapeshifters then die, they return to the same lake. What happens in between is indeed still a mystery. The old gods created this world but never finished it, showing us that no god ever finishes their work. The shapeshifters now look for other beings to imitate in order to learn. Lost in all worlds and eventually returning to the mirror lane. Returning to nothing and everything. Glacial Flood Lane by Sarah Finnegan. Flavor A cliff once rose from the surf here, until Pura Dawn Greeter declared that it was blocking her view and pulled it down, barehanded, by Iskan Kana Storyteller. The Return of the Kana. This time telling us of an old story and of Pura, who is not referenced anywhere else. Apparently she was a giant who could take down cliffs. Maybe the giant pulled the cliff down so hard that a crater was formed and then it flooded itself and later froze, showing us how old the story must be. It is not sure to me whether the Kana actually live forever, but perhaps they do. Or they have a lot of knowledge. Or they might just have a lot of stories from wandering around so much with the same people over and over and over and over again. Calamity Bearer by Simon Dominic. Flavor, he'd ignite the world tree itself if he could. This giant shows us the power of giants. It enables other giants to deal double their damage. And double can be a lot, especially with giants. Now this card just lives for destruction, just like Tibble does. I do not think they would become friends though, because this calamity bearer wants to destroy, not inflict pain first. This giant would love to destroy its own world someday, in an ultimate act of passion for its craft. Giant Wizard by Andrew Marr, another impressive token card. We have seen the dwarf berserkers with boats that are aflame. Now we see a frozen giant wizard, surfing through the waves or wading through the sea both terrifying. Its hands are ready and flowing with freezing magic, as if it would start freezing the world itself. A welcome job when the fire giants are trying to set it all on fire. Here's to hoping Agar gets to unite fire and ice. Hey, you are here at the end, which means you enjoyed the video in some way, shape or form. 
That's wonderful. You mean a lot to me. Have a nice day.